Hey there, I'm Jody Vance. I'm George Affleck. And it's time for... Unspun. So, George, um... Oh, hey, hey, hey. Not while we're on the show, <laughs> Jody. Oh, no, is it because no it's, candy. No, it's, no it's candy. not a chocolate bar? It's not a chocolate bar. It's not a bagel. There's no mustard on it. It's a Timbit. A little, little inside joke for all of Canada there. Can you I? Don't, no, you don't want to eat on No. That was, a, that was a good... That was our gag. A- acting. How do we do? No. For okay. those people listening, that was that Jody was really grabbing a uh, Timbit. <laughs> uh, because... Because Justin Trudeau uh, had uh, issues with real, really, uh, his blood sugar in 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 uh, Ottawa this week uh, during the budget uh, filibuster. He You're not a, allowed to eat in a, chambers. He, yes, that's very rude. You're not even supposed to, or have, bring in canned drinks that have logos on them, anything like that. Right. You bring in generic stuff to drink, like water or coffee. Generally, you're very limited in what you can do in these places. And he broke that rule and apologized when he was called out by the opposition. Uh, I, I suppose that was a comedic moment in this filibuster uh, situation, filibuster being nonstop. Right, so explain that a little bit for those of us who are like, what is that? We hear the word all the time. What is going on there right now? And, and is there room for levity like this or is this just ridiculous? Well, it's what happens is they basically, which they have the right to do, and this isn't as easy to do on a civic level and you can do it provincially, but it's basically you, in, a, in the case of the budget, they're taking every single part of the budget and debating each one of those things separately. Nonstop. As opposed to just doing an omnibus decision uh, and saying all of this is good or this part or this section. And then randomly there can be a confidence vote, vote apparently. If they, don't, if, they, yeah, if they don't have enough people in the, in the House, uh, they in a budget they can call a confidence vote, which they came very close to doing this week because, you know, they, they got cots out in the thing for them to have naps on and uh, it's uh, having sat in council chamber till 11 or 12 or, you know, after 12 at night and after 12, 14 hour days. It's exhausting and, and sitting uh, and having to you know pay attention and, and it's not an easy thing to do. And filibustering can go on for days and days and days and days. Something in the states they go on for you know you see these things and they, sp- and they they do these speeches and they ramble on. Sometimes totally irrelevant to what the issue is about. In this case, they're filibustering because they want to talk about the Jody Wilson Rebel thing. They want to talk about that and they want to keep bringing attention to that. And so. Uh, it has nothing to do with the budget, but they keep driving it home. And in this case, uh, they also wanted to talk about what the prime minister was eating. Right, so. which I I found that to be that moment where it was the ap- apology. It was actually a chocolate bar. There was sort of this feeling that it, you know it broke some of the tension for a second, but it's been getting extremely tense in the back and forth. Mm-hmm. And one thing that really bothers me, I don't wear my political stripes on Unspun. Actually, I don't really wear them anywhere. Uh, I have opinions and. I follow along with platforms and whatnot, as you and I have Mm -hmm. talked about a lot. Um, And it's bothering me. I don't like the term fake news. And I I also don't like the term fake feminist, which was being yelled a lot by women Mm -hmm. of the opposition, women leaders across to the prime minister. And there's a better way, I think, of saying that. Uh, what is currently happening with the exodus of primarily very powerful women from Justin Trudeau's caucus. That's that's an issue for sure, but mm-hmm. I don't like that it's labeled, now you're a fake feminist. What do you think is going on here? I know it's a very test, oh. but I trust um, you, you You have a very strong women in your life. Yeah, there's a whole room full of women on the other side of that right. wall right there. So yeah, just, I, 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 uh, ask you, I ask you knowing. Yes, it's, I, I, you, I obviously, I think, uh, as a white guy, you don't have to be. Uh, you, you worry about, <laughs> you know, being attacked. We're going to let you anything say you might say, but I will talk about management style. Which let's I think say, is let's what's talk the issue about that. Here. Okay. I think Trudeau made a decision based on uh, building a caucus around him and a, and a cabinet, uh, a cabinet mainly that was based on math and based on gender, based on ethnicity, um, uh, and. It clearly is working against him now, uh, and uh, that is not to say that these women aren't strong women. In fact, the opposite might be the case. They might be, he had chose people because of their gender uh, first, perhaps, thinking that that was a way to manage, uh, and he just so happens to potentially have chosen two, three strong women, as of the three now that are being very vocal, uh, that are uh, turning his whole gender, uh, his his feminism uh, upside down. So I'm going to interject here because I don't want you to paint yourself into a corner mm-hmm. with regard to that because I, I, you and I talk about this before we sit down here. And it's easier for me to point out the lady parts, lady, 
<laughs> I'm not even. I'm not I know, even, right? I can I'm say that. If you said there. that, boy, that mm. would just be. Uh, but one of the things that strikes me uh, a couple levels. Number one, yeah, he was trying to fill a diversity, gender equality quota of some sort because that would be popular, and it was. Yeah, it uh, 2015, the famous it, quote. Uh, they asked why you, did he, you got the why did he do this? Yeah. Because it's 2015. Mm -hmm. Now, some of those women in those roles were put in very powerful, very mm -hmm. high level jobs and seemed to have the, the credentials to have earned those positions. Um, but perhaps, and this is where I want you to weigh in, something that we did talk about, mm -hmm. perhaps women being fairly new to those roles, they didn't quite understand how our federal government runs as a top-down. Yeah, the top-down thing is very, in government you have uh, the premier, Prime Minister's office and in provincial you have the pre Premier's office, very top-down approach to management. I don't necessarily manage my business like that and I don't, you know, I try to have a very collegial atmosphere. Uh, and most, a lot of, sort of two ways you can run a business, you can have a top-down approach or you can have the sort of more collegial structure. Uh, and you trust the team and you're not, you know, micromanaging. Or micromanaging, yeah. it doesn't matter yeah. what, what gender you are, it's a style of management. But structurally, uh, federally and provincially, the way government works is out of the premier, prime minister or the premier's office. And actually, in Vancouver's case, uh, with, uh, with 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 uh, Gary Robertson, hold on, uh, he, he created a top-down approach with the, with his mayor's office, and then all added forty-three communications. staff. Okay, I can drink then. Forty-three <laughs> communication staff. He, to every time we mention the communication the staff, the messaging. We drink. Uh, yes. But he created a top-down approach in the city right. of Vancouver. So, um, so you, you have this innate structure in government where it's it's top-down through the prime ministers in this case office. So people might say, "What the hell does gender have to do with that?" And my point would be, from your, you can't say this because you're a guy and a white guy at that, um, from a female perspective, mm -hmm. th if somebody's challenging what the hell does it ha have to do with being a woman, why is this a, a gender issue in the federal government right now and the prime minister's office in particular? It's not. It's just that always, traditionally, those roles were, uh, those jobs were filled by men mm -hmm. who perhaps were groomed along the way to understand how it works. To, and, and a lot of people, particularly now, given what we've been witnessing south of the border in the United States, people want to be more engaged in government and they're okay with the the old school, old boys club way not being the way moving forward. So yeah. I think there's some of that pushback on this in particular where people aren't as quick to say, oh, she must have been trouble. Mm -hmm. She must have, she must, I don't like the fact that some men are saying, or some, some people but, yeah. are saying that, well, she just probably wasn't qualified. Yeah, and we'll never know, probably, right. what the truth is about that. Uh, as a human, uh, yes. I don't like top-down approach. I don't, I don't do well in that no, kind right. of situation. Very inclusive, uh, That's dude. why I like to own my own business and <laughs> not have to be... Uh, you know, and I like to have a more collegial atmosphere. I don't like yeah. being, you know. I wish we could have like a random POV shot of the room out there, <laughs> yeah. just to know how truly uh, collaborative you are yes. with well, with the people. Let's t talk about though. There, it's mm -hmm. not just uh, Jody Wilson Raybould. Um, that's a big piece of the puzzle, mm -hmm. um, but also uh, Jean Philpot. Um, we have uh, the happenings with Joyce Murray. Yes. I mean, what, can, unspin what happened with Joyce Murray, please. Well, I think we talked about this last week, yes. and I called this out last week, that she was probably getting for a promotion. Uh, when she was like... Out, she wrote the letter to constituents saying, Justin Trudeau is great, I love him, he's the best, I've never seen any kind of, uh, uh, you know, anything like what she was being described by these other people. So, uh, guess what she got this week? She got her, her prize. So she got her ministry... Uh, and uh, it's a big ministry. Um, is and that she's not well, but she's perfectly, absolutely, hundred percent qualified for the job. Totally. Uh, and in fact, should have had a ministry a long time ago. But we know why. It's because of her stance against Kinder Morgan. She was being punished for that uh, for a so long time. So interesting. There's the unspun piece that I love when you explain this stuff, George. Is that the unspun is she didn't get that opportunity because the Kinder Morgan pushed back, and then she did get it when she kissed the ring. Yes. <laughs> What's also interesting is that it's telling, perhaps, of the Prime Minister's style of management and his team in that they at first didn't give her that any portfolio because of her stance on one file. Right. So in a way, it sort of it actually solidifies Jody Wilson-Raybould's argument saying that the Prime Minister's 
not doesn't like what I'm saying and therefore demoted me. Uh, and in the case of Joyce Murray, w was never promoted until she reversed or has right. become somewhat silent on the Kinder Morgan thing. And I, I'll be interested to see what effect that will have on her riding, which in her she has very unusual riding. It's uh, and very uh, it's very green riding in a lot of ways, um, although it's very wealthy riding. Um, but it has an NDP. Uh, Provincial uh, Deb Eby, uh, and she is a liberal. Uh, and if her, her backtracking potentially on the Kinder Morgan could hurt her in in what might be a very precarious election, if things keep going the way they're going. I live in that neighborhood, not a wealthy part of that neighborhood, and a very small little postage stamp in that neighborhood. She's the only politician who's knocked on my door, hmm. and stood there and talked for half an hour. And I was like, I'm really? still like, you keep going. No, I just want to explain blah blah blah. And she was very passionate about wanting to know what needed to be done better mm -hmm. like i was qu i was quite interested to see that i, I don't get a lot of people knocking on it would take her about three years to get through her it was a long that yeah i'm <laughs> like, like like sister i'm not going to tell you how i'm voting keep moving because that's that's my i don't do anything <laughs> knocking on door. doors in point gray in that area is yeah. a little easier than point knocking on doors in prince george i'll tell you that you know i'm sure it's like gonna drive to every single let's place. talk about uh selena cesar mm -hmm. chavanas that's the third person that's sort of come out very vocally against trudeau and in this case has decided not even to be in the caucus so she's like i'm not she's a liberal sitting anymore. i'm gonna sit as not independent. running again either yeah. so she's doing her one term and out of there so clearly she didn't like politics and like what was going on and you know but uh, she said she was berated she said that she was yeah, berated to the point that her husband could hear allegedly the prime minister yelling so loudly at her on the phone that her husband could hear it so there's that you know uh, this coolness that we Usually see. Usually those calls come from constituents. Is <laughs> a politician. There you go. So, oh, it, I mean, okay. but Sorry. is there some irrational expectation that our leader wouldn't have a temper? Uh, it's, I, I, it's, again, it's, it's a top-down management style I think you see quite common, right. commonly in, 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 in that style when you have these leaders. Uh, and so he's grown up in that culture. His dad was a prime minister. He right. only, he understands that culture. He lived in that culture. His dad was prime minister. He you know Groomed. a very strong leader. So yeah. uh, he's been sur he's surrounded by these people that uh, were very much part of even previous Trudeau and and Kachin's government. And so uh, it's what he has what he knows. Maybe I don't know. I I I think he probably regrets having those if it was, if he did do that. But uh, here he is now with it facing this challenge. All right, where do we go next? Uh, let's touch on the bu budget briefly. Yeah, I, I think that it was kind of, you know, it was, it was. The there's some gifts for municipalities related to transit and funding, and there's the housing uh, stuff. The, That's CMHC. The, the CMHC, and a little and, bit of a break. There's a push to get the youth vote, uh, and and there's some other things in there. But there was nothing that I saw that was really like what I thought might happen. Would you see targeted specific ridings would get some goodies to. Swim, swing the vote towards them. That's because that's last week. You're like, ooh, yeah. it's goody day. Yeah, no, and it wasn't. It, there was yeah. lots of money. They're certainly blowing the cash. Yeah. Uh, huge deficits for the long term. Um, Which was supposed to be balanced by 2019. Yes. Yeah, so but they're saying they're giving more to the middle class, so they had to spend more for the middle yeah. class. The problem is, if we head into a recession uh, and you spent all your money and you put, you know, generally, in my opinion is, you know, you try when, you, when times are good, you kind of control your spending. When times are rough, that's when government can start. You're cash fiscally around. responsible. Yes, but there is uh, there is math that shows that you can run deficits forever if you're a growing economy. That's that's the argument he uses, that Trudeau uses, and the Liberals use. So where should we go now? Let, let's actually talk about how uh, in an economic downturn and if there are restrictions put on... No, let's talk about Brad West first because that'll lead us into... If you're oh, well, it's a bit about governance too and, yeah. and, and, and control. Uh, Hi, Brad, by the way. Yeah. Yes. He watches and listens. I, I've heard that. Yes. Um, he, you know, he's come up pretty strong on a few files, but this week his big thing, and I kind of gone on a Twitter chat with him about this, which was related to um, uh, renovations. And he's saying, this is absolutely wrong. Uh, these renovations are not justified in that, th 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 that these people should be kicked out of their homes, and then you bring in people that are, uh, can pay higher rents. Because um, that's, the, that's the impetus of it, though. I mean, even if your renovation that you evicted the people for is simply putting lipstick on the pig. You can still raise the rent to the new tenant. The right. current tenant can only go up by the yeah, mandated percentage. Now, right? or 0.5 yeah. or something yes. uh, so this yeah. is a way to be able to go, 
you know, the market value of this place, my 400 square foot place that mm-hmm. I've got a tenant who's been there for 15 years is $600 a month. If I get rid of this tenant, I can char- charge $1,200 a month. Yes, and so, and but you know, some of these places do need renovating. Well, yeah, and that's the this, this problem. This carrot and stick approach to governance is yep. always a challenge, and, and I'm more of a carrot kind of approach. Maybe we can create tax incentives. Vancouver has a lot of regulations. I mean, he's attacked Vancouver a little bit, and I want, there are we have a f- quite a few things in Vancouver to try and control that. Um, uh, some of it related to when you build a condo and you over, where a rental was, you have this thing called rate of change, and you can't, you know, you can't. Uh, you have to find new homes for these people and provide them some sort of cash. Uh, so that's all built into the into a program. We have na- neighborhoods where it's protected. For example, s- in the Marpool Community Plan in down south of Vancouver. Uh, there's a whole area that can't be turned into condos. Uh, these homes are, these buildings are protected. Good. But if you protect it too much and you don't have, and you say you can't kick people out or you can't renovate, and in, in, you, you, you might end up being like those places in the downtown east side where you have dilapidation. Right, the SROs where they just, just start, <sighs> and, you, and you have an owner who clearly doesn't care. Who's um, loaded. Yeah, and, and so you, what's the balance? And that's a tough one. It's a yeah. really tough one to create. And you can't, the bylaws are quite strict. You can't change the bylaws like that, by the way. You, you but Brad challenging. West is motivated to create a situation where rent evictions would be against the bylaw, right? Yes, he wants to bring in a bylaw. I think that, t- that will make that possible. That's way I oh, okay. So, so he, he wants to, to create. To but how do you ask. enforce that? Because isn't that the problem with the SROs on the downtown east side? Of course, they're all, uh, yes. you know, completely flying in the face of all bylaws. But how do you enforce that yeah, when you've and, got how many seven bylaw officers? And, in and Vancouver's city? expropriating those guys. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Uh, but it's taken. And I'm. We'll see. I, I think that legally. It's a tough argument to expropriate for social reasons. You can expropriate because you want to put a highway through a place, right? Uh, but to expropriate uh, for social because for these because you believe that these people are, it's actually I don't know if well, well I think they're going through a process now to see if it's, they can do it, um, but I don't know if it'll hold up in court. So well, we're gonna have to you have update. to be careful. I think Brad is talking about stuff that I think and you know and I, that was kind of pointing out things to him on Twitter and we'll see what he can do. But he has a lot of restrictions. You have a lot of restrictions in general in municipal government because you you serve at the pleasure you're the to the province. So you have to they control the charter in Vancouver and their municipal bylaws are overseen by the province. And you if you want to change your bylaw, you I gotta go ask the I can't believe province. that those levels of government don't work together. That as a taxpayer yes. pisses me off. Yes. Because the assumption is they're all talking to each other. They have to be. How are we getting anything done? Oh, we're not really getting as much done as we could if everybody got onto the same page or worked in conjunction and like just said taxis? yes or no. Can we talk about <laughs> that? Yay, Cater! We got we got right. Woo. We got Uber. I don't think Cater. I Coo- and ca- it, something is better than nothing. Okay, so Cater, this uh, new rideshare service, or mm-hmm. it's been around for quite a bit, quite a while now, I think it's three years, uh-huh. uh, and on an app that you can utilize that to somehow confirm your way to where you want to go, because taxis are just uh, unreliable. How about especially that? Especially if you live out in the burbs, especially. You can't get a cab back. Mm-hmm. How about you just change that rule? How about you just change that rule that those cabs, wherever they are, can take a fare to wherever they need to go? Well, they do like, have that on the weekends, but they all come in downtown. How about <laughs> not <laughs> just the weekends, though, George? Well, and that's the point. That's what they're saying Cater will provide, mm-hmm. this sort of um, a flexibility for the Why the not drivers. just do burn lift? That's what I would argue. That it's 100% we're the only city, pretty much that I can think of, that hasn't got it yet. And, yeah. and there are some issues related to, you know, that their argument is that you don't have consistency of, of the product and that there's dangers and all totally. these things. Totally. And there are. Yeah. And I can tell you this as a as a woman who uh, finds herself downtown Vancouver on a rainy, dark evening, far too late by myself, having left, let's say, a charity event, and I can't get a cab home. If there was Uber, Lyft, and cabs, and the cabs were available, I'd pick the cab. As if I was by myself, yeah. I would choose the black top checkered cab or the yellow cab because I know the brand and I feel yeah, trusted. Sure. But if if it's me and a couple of friends and we're going to blah 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 and we can get an Uber, well, let's get an Uber. Yeah. I, so I, would I, my I, needs? W- it would change with my needs. Yeah, I can say most times I've had much more f- success and experience uh, with 
Uber than I have had with taxis. Hawaii, I was there yes. and took a, a Uber, and then I there was a cab one day. Uh, oh, we'll grab a cab, and it was a terrible experience. Oh gosh! Okay. So there you, you go. know, and they have and Hawaii is kind of a hybrid system where yep. you can't pick up at the airport and things like that. But you know, they, they, they're it's just like come on. I mean, I don't know what this. Let's and, give it and a this shot. Thing is owned by the cab guy, so you sort right. of. It's hard not to be cynical that it's a play. It's, uh, a, it's a piece of that lobby puzzle. <sighs> yeah. Speaking of the, the lobby puzzle, as we look south of the border and the power of the NRA, mm -hmm. uh, mass shooting after mass shooting after mass shooting, at kids awful, horrendous in the United States, most mass shootings by leaps and bounds. Um, and then there's this... Last week's uh, horrific mass shooting at the mosque in uh, Christchurch, New Zealand, and within what six days, the gun laws are changing. Yeah, this is how you actually get stuff done. It's amazing. I mean, the the props that uh, the prime minister is getting there is is, is worthy. Uh, you know, I think that I've never heard of legislation turning around that fast. And anybody who now Let's argues in any country that says they can't do this, come on, come on. I mean, you know, in America, yes, you can. A, you, you can, and, and I think that it's uh, it, how she actually managed to do it, given that she also had to deal with all the, the whole all of nightmare it. of what was going on. Her name is Yacinda Ardern, and if you've watched any of the coverage of her helping to console and care for not just the Muslim community in Christchurch, but the entire community dealing with the fear associated with something as horrific as this, um, it's so incredibly heartwarming and refreshing to see somebody lead in that way after so much noise of just garbage <laughs> in leadership. Yeah. And I'm not talking about Canadian government there. I'll just leave that with you. you I you think just, we can do the math. You on can that do one. the math on that. Uh, before I forget, at George underscore Affleck on Twitter, at Jody with a Y Vance also on Twitter. Uh, we are seeing your tweets at Unspun Podcast as well. Should we note? Yes, we should. At the Orca. .ca. Rex Murphy's joined. Yes, calling us now for the Orca. Uh, I noticed on Facebook when it was announced that <laughs> there is a definitely different, differing opinions about him. They go that's from blowhard to rock star. And uh, that's the good thing uh -huh. because um, people love to hate people they disagree with and people love to love people they agree with. And when you're loud about both of those sides, you're doing something right. Yeah, I mean, his writing is so clever. It's so I, clever, I, it makes I, me like if you've scared ever seen to him do the middle. <laughs> yeah, if you've ever seen him do a speech, it's it's unbelievable, yeah. like how he takes you on his journey. Uh, so anybody, if you ever have a chance to see him live, it's quite quite a show. Well, uh, watching him for years do his yeah. commentary, I mean, that would, you'd stop and, and, and take in the authenticity of his position, because he is definitely coming from, this is, this is my position. Yeah. And, and like it or don't. It is interesting in that, in, and, and, and actually going back to what's happening in New Zealand and, and her strength behind that, and in politics especially, especially it's, it's, it's and, and Brad West, I think, going back to him, yeah. instinctive, uh, speaking instinctively about what you care about, uh, obviously is more authentic, but it's actually really scary to do. Uh, it's it's risky. Uh, you, you get a lot of hate, just like Rex does, and I'm sure Brad does. And like you have. And I have. For You've sure. gotten a lot and of pushback. I'm, I've for always just been very forth. like you know whatever. Um, but and in your quiet moments, it, it's hard. Sure. I mean, yeah. the, it's and you know a lot of the hate was actually in the chamber and <laughs> against me at City Hall. Speaking of uh, that, in the chamber in City Hall right now. By the way, that's the new my name of my new sitcom. Is it <laughs> in the chamber? <laughs> It's well, got a whole, bunch, a whole bunch of crazy what's characters. Been, what's been going on in there? Well, yeah, lately. it's been uh, well. And this, yeah, they, this week, uh, well, they have a, they're on a break right now, but yeah. they have a whole bunch of, uh, you know, there's a motion by Colleen Hardwick that she retracted, which was, uh, I, I, you know, I, I know Colleen, and she's with the same party that I was with, um, but her motion was uh, full of errors, to be honest, and uh, and has led to two organizations. Uh, uh, Basically, uh, calling her out on it that she named in this, and she, uh, and one of them is you know SNC at Lavalin, and she named you know Bombardier, and they've come out and said this is not true, it's not accurate. Uh, in your role as a councillor, uh, you have to be uh, in your role in office. You, you're governing, and uh, you you have you have a responsibility uh, to, to do your due to diligence. Do your due diligence, yeah. And don't you have twice the budget, three times the budget now to do your due diligence? Yeah, well, they have. They got four hundred percent, four hundred percent more money. To I don't know if they've actually done the hiring yet for these people, but she certainly could have used more research. And I think that you know it, it's it's interesting to see this this 
council, which is this mixed dream mixed council, uh, trying to operate, and, and I and I watch it because I'm a nerd, and they go on for hours and hours about on one motion, uh, and some some reports are coming to to from staff that are supposed to be a positive good news report, and they get turned into uh, a nightmare. There was one about you know the West End parking, and it, um, it got into this. A conversation that actually turned it all backwards, and it's like I, it's really challenging. I, I keep uh, trying to figure out in City Council of Vancouver, and and actually going back to again to New Zealand where she has the, she's the proportional representation, so they have actually this very mixed uh, governance. So and in I New don't Zealand. like proportional representation, right. but you have this mixed governance, and so which is. To, the, to the achieve, same, you're drawing the line to our city council, which is very mixed now. Mixed council, and like we have the Green Party, we have NPA. Yeah. We Where have it used to just be vision, city, rubber we stamp. Cope, we have an independent mayor. Yeah. Uh, and in the case of New Zealand, she has. So actually, to get stuff done is sometimes really, really challenging. And so that's kudos again to, to her in, in the Prime Minister of New Zealand to actually pull this gun regulation off with that kind of structure. She's just got super right wing people in there and super left wing, and she's, I think, the Green Party. Um, so uh, in the case of Vancouver City Council, people ask. They wanted a mixed council, um, but uh, currently I, I see a very little progress. Uh, Is that in getting novice? Things down. I think there's certainly a lot of inexperience there. Understanding the role of staff, respecting the role of staff. Staff's job, uh, and people will have these conspiracy theories about staff, and they're all vision, you know, uh, you know, moles or whatever. But they're not. Most of them, they they want to make council look good because they love their job. They're not in politics. Uh, they're in. They like to do their work. If they care about traffic, or they care about building, they care about. They generally care about their jobs, and and I think you have to respect them. And uh, and if they start to abuse these staff, they, if they, if they then then you deal with that. But generally, they want to come and make council look good. Right. Um, and and be a resource. Yeah. And, to and prop up and support what is happening and coming to council. Yeah. Uh, we are going to wrap up. This is episode 11. Next week is going to be fun, actually. Episode 12, we're going to do some George facts that are actual real solid facts. If you've just found Unspun Podcast, we're going to reflect back on some of the unspinning that has been done, where George has been bang on the money right. What? I know. You'll have to tune in. Make sure you uh, subscribe, download at theorca.ca. Follow us at George underscore Affleck at Jody Mance. That's it for Unspun. Thanks. Thanks.